Okay, bouncing ball in Flash. The first thing I want to do is create a ground plane where this is going to go. So I'm going to double click this and type ground. And I will take a, um, I'll take my line tool, just a line tool here, and I'll make it black. And I will draw the ground plane. I'm holding shift to keep it straight as I draw it. Now I'm going to create an, um, the path of action. And for this, I'm going to use my pen tool, which I haven't shown you before. But pay attention to this pen tool. Um, you'll see how this works if you watch this video again. So rather than answering questions and doing it a bunch of times on here, pay close attention. And then after, bless you, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at it again. So I'm going to start by um, clicking and dragging to the right with my pen tool to drag out this tangent line. And I'm going to let go. Now you're not going to see anything. But that point has been set. I'm going to come down here and click a point on the, on the line. I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to click and drag in the center. I'm holding shift down to drag this out. I'm going to come back down here and click a point on the line. And I'm going to come up here and once again drag out and come down here and click. Um, now I'm not crazy about how this looks so I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to take this one and bring it out a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit higher. And this one I could bring it down a little bit. Maybe maybe I'll actually oops, click off and maybe I'll drag this one so it's a little Oh no, what's up with this? I'm going to drag this down just to make this a little further. Ah! Drag these points to kind of balance it out nicely. You see how this is a very smooth looking curve. It's it's pretty well balanced. So that's a reasonable path. It seems like it's a little steep right here, so I'm going to bring this influence handle in a little bit to make it not as uh, not as steep. Okay, so I've got the ground, the path, and now I'm going to draw my little hatch marks in. So I'm going to create a new layer for that. And I'm going to call it marks. And I'm only doing these on different layers because in Flash, if I did them on the same layer and I wanted to adjust it, it would merge the artwork together in a way that I don't want it to do. So I'm going to have it like this. Um, and I'm going to take, a, take my brush tool maybe instead of my pencil tool. The pencil tool does some weird things sometimes. So I'll make my brush smaller mm -hmm. and I'm going to draw in the little hatch mark. So I'll put here one in the middle and then I'll put one on either side like this and a little bit further apart and a little bit further apart and a little bit further and uh, come down to the bottom here that's going to be a pretty significant bounce up. And I haven't yet discussed um, squash and stretch and this type of acceleration, but I will in a second. Okay, so now I've got a path of action with these little hatch marks that are defining my motion. And and I've got these extreme cases where the ball is coming down pretty fast. It's like in a really fast to the bottom, slow down, really fast to the bottom, and then come up. I'm going to create a new layer for actually just the ball. So is he going to follow the marks? Yeah, I'm going to create, I'm just going to create a, I'll take a circle here, an oval tool. I don't want the stroke, so I'll turn that off. And I'm going to create, yeah, I'm recording it. 
I'm going to create this ball on this other layer. And now I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to click F. Actually, you know what? I want to have frame one with nothing. And I need to see this on all the frames. So I'm going to come out to later frame. And I'm going to select F5. I'm going to click F5 to drag all those out. Following me? So I'm going to take this, this first one. I'm going to take the ball. On the first frame, I don't want anything because I don't want it to be that when I open my movie, you're seeing a ball hanging there in, in midair. So I'm going to have nothing on that first frame. I'm going to click F7 and draw the ball, like kind of just coming in halfway. I want to turn off the snapping. This thing is snapping all around. So I want to go to here and just say edit snapping and make sure it's, well, I guess it is off. If yours is snapping around, uh, make sure that's off. Snapping, when you're dragging something, it'll like pop to another spot. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to click then F6 to take that same ball and I'm going to move it to there. F6, move it to there. I'm putting it right so the intersection of the ball is right on the middle of that of that piece of artwork or of that patch mark that I've drawn. Drag this one here. F6 each time to copy it. I'm staying right on the curve. Here they're going to start overlapping a little as it slows down at the top. Speeds up coming down. And I'll do one more with it totally off the screen. Now I'm going to get rid of all these. Shift F5 to get rid of them. And I'm going to hide these other layers. Actually, before I hide them, I want to turn them into guide layers. If you double click on the layer itself or on the icon of the layer and you change it to guide, then it won't show up in your final movie when you save your movie out. If you don't do this, even if you turn them off, even if I hide these layers, if you don't turn them into guide layers, they will show up when you play your movie back. So I'm going to play this. Now it looks pretty good, but it's not doing one other thing that I didn't talk about yet. And that's um, creating a relationship between form and volume. So when this thing hits the ground plane at the bottom, I want it to squash down to give it a little bounce to it. So I could take this tool here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'll take this free transform tool and drag it down and drag it out. Now the rule is that as the form of the ball changes, right, as the shape changes, the volume stays the same. So let's say this was filled with one cup of water and it was a water balloon. The balloon doesn't get bigger or smaller. It doesn't get more water in it. It just changes its shape. So, so I can't say, okay, I'm going to make this this big, because now it's got two cups of water in it, right? The form changes, the volume stays the same. So that, let's see if that's about, about right. If I go back to here, maybe I can make it a little bit bigger. Maybe it's a little big there. And then when it bounces up, it... It's the opposite effect. So it comes up, it squashes here, and it stretches here. So I'm going to stretch it out and make it skinny. I want to rotate it so it stays on that path. Then I want to go to the next time, next place where it does that. I'm going to hold the space bar down to move this down and come to the next spot where the ball hits and do the same thing, squash it. And I'm going to come up to this next frame and stretch it. And put it back on its path. And since this is really quick motion, I'm not going to do it up to there as well. Now I'm going to go back to 100% here. I'm going to turn off my other layers so we can just see the ball. I will create one frame with the ball. Actually, this frame 
I will delete that so there's nothing there. So it starts and stops with nothing. And I want to click off so nothing's selected. I don't want any of these to be selected. And I'm going to um, hit return. So there's a bouncing ball, like a, a legit physics-oriented ball. Then I'm going to save out the project. So I'm going to say File, Export, Export Movie. Now, there had been some problems with Flash um, in the export. Let's see if it's still the case. I'm going to save this as Blonder R underscore B-O-U for bounce. And I'm going to make it a QuickTime Movie and say Save. And go to QuickTime Settings. Change in the settings to make the compression type H264. And click OK. I don't have any sound, and I don't need internet streaming. I'm going to click OK, and then export. Um, so let's take a look at the ball. Export is now complete. Double click it. And we'll play it. It didn't go to the last frame, but... Oh, that's the same thing with mine, look. Did it go all the way to the last frame? All right, so that's it. So it worked all right. If, it, if you see artifacts, when you save this out, if you see like a little piece of the video that stays behind, then in addition to saving out as a QuickTime, because the QuickTime export can be messed up, you go File, Export, and export it as a... Um, oops, not from there, from Flash, sorry. File, Export, Movie, and you export it instead of a QuickTime Movie, export it as SWF Movie. SWF stands for Shockwave Flash, and that's that's the native Flash format for a movie that's playable with the Flash player. Blonder R underscore B O U. One sec, and I'll click Save, and that's it. Let me uh, stop the movie, and that's it.